Hi, it's Thursday morning, and I'm just going to do a brief lecture and, once again, make a book recommendation of the book called Cut to the Chase, which is published and edited by the woman who runs the program, Linda Venus, who's terrific. And it features all kinds of teachers from UCLA who are not me. And I think that's one of the virtues of the book for you guys, is that you get a sense of perspective from other people who are teaching writing, who are professionals, many of whom disagree with me, many of whom have a much more outline-oriented approach than mine. But one thing in particular I wanted to recommend to you, because this week you'll be thinking about writing scenes, and next week getting into writing scenes. And I wanted to help you in terms of thinking about how a scene works as opposed to the whole thrust of a story. I'm very excited by the adventures we're going to have this week, telling the story from a protagonist view and an antagonist view, and seeing how that syncs up with the seven steps we're, we've been playing with. The voice of the antagonist, the sense of what the opposition is, is really terrifically valuable. Um, and what I wanted to do, and draw, this draws from my chapter called The Who, What, Where, Why, and How of Writing a Scene by Dan Vining, who's very experienced and very good, uh, has a wonderful wry hu humor. But he talks about how something that I mention in another way um, when I talk about Mamet's three questions and how those three questions apply to a whole story as well as to a scene. Who wants what from whom? What happens if they don't get it and why? And he talks about how every scene has a beginning a good scene has a beginning, middle, and end. And most of all, he talks about how a scene ends. He says that um, a good scene does come to inclusion if it's just a ha look on a character's face. The end of a scene concludes a piece of action in such a way there are implications, repercussions. This is so important, I'll repeat it. The end of a scene concludes a piece of action in such a way that there are implications and repercussions. It's not the end of the scene if it doesn't have implications. That is absolutely terrific for uh, you guys to think about as you're writing the opening scenes of your movie, as you're thinking about writing the opening scenes of the movie. How do we create mystery? How do you create a sense that um, there's something more story to be told about the person we're watching in this scene? And if you go back and look at any of the classic movies that you've been studying, that you've been thinking about, that you want to do, you'll probably find that those opening scenes ask questions that the audience will want to know the answer to um, and set, a, set up in an intriguing way to look at a character. And it's almost that simple. If you think of a scene as having a beginning, middle, and an end, and at the end we get implications that the character is going to be doing something surprising or going to face something surprising, then it's much, much better than a scene that just illustrates that somebody is happy or unhappy, that someone is content, that someone is um, you know, getting on an airplane and little do they know uh, there is a bomb on the airplane. If you think of Die Hard, for example, Die Hard is about a man who's coming back to try to engineer a reunion with his wife. Um, and that emotional agenda doesn't sound like all that much, but it actually propels him into the story as more than just a cop who happens to be there. Uh, it makes the whole situation much more personal and pays off long into the movie that he has a situation with his family he has to resolve, and the way he res resolves it happens to do with saving the world. Um, these are just things to think about. Short lecture, but I hope you enjoy it, and I look forward to having further Skype conversations. I have one scheduled right now, and that will be the end of this.